Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Monday, February the 4th. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Connect Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. Tonight the Vancouver Canucks take on the Philadelphia Flyers in Philly, a team that they beat very handily 5-1 last month, actually two months ago, December 15th in Vancouver. That was actually Dave Haxtell's last game as the Flyers head coach, but since then the Flyers have gone... Uh, they've been really good. They've crept their way to within striking distance of a playoff spot. They have won seven in a row, actually, um, bolstered by the strong goaltending of rookie Carter Hart. Um, Vancouver coming off a, a great win, a five, a complete win, a 5-1 victory over the Colorado Avalanche on Saturday night. So this is game number two of a four-game road trip for the Vancouver Canucks. And with that win, they are in sole possession of the eighth spot, the second wildcard spot in the West. So a chance to solidify that tonight. So it should be a good game. It should be a really good game. Uh, you know, I was at that Vancouver-Philly game back in December. It was a great game for Vancouver fans. It wasn't the most entertaining game ever because it, it wasn't really back and forth. The, the Canucks actually demolished them that night. So I expect a much uh, tougher contest, especially being in Philly and given how good Philly has been playing. So I'm looking forward to tonight. Looking forward to uh, seeing hopefully another Canucks win. Have high hopes for what they're doing. I'm going to keep working that, that song title in as, as long as the Canucks are playing well. So I'm excited for tonight. Let's talk about the Vancouver Canucks. Well, let's talk about their lineup, a couple lineup issues. Well, one big major one. We'll get to the goaltending and work our way that way first. Jacob Markstrom will get the start net. The same 3D pairings of Tanner and Ed... I said Tanner and Edliv. It is Tanner and Edler. It is uh, Ben Hutton and Troy Stetcher. And there's Derek Pouliot, Eric Branson. That means Alex Biega once again sitting out. Ford up front, that's where the big change is. Sven Berchi will not play tonight. Um, so I'll talk about him in a second. So it's Tim Schaller will replace him on Horvat's line. So it'll be Horvat, Schaller, and Levo. Nice, uh, some big bodies there. Not the most skilled ever, but we'll see how they do. Horvat's still been playing well, though, no matter who you put with them. So Horvat, Schaller, and Levo. Then our wonderful line of Pedersen, Besser, and Godobin. They had a great game last time against Colorado. Our third line, also a great game. Probably the best line of the of the night was uh, Sutter between Roussel and Vertanen. Roussel and Vertanen coming off two uh, two point nights, and then our fourth line that's played very well for the last month that is Beagle, Erickson, and Mott. A bit of an expensive fourth line, but uh, they're playing well nonetheless. So again, Horvat with Levo and Schaller, Pedersen, Besser, Godobin, Sutter, Roussel, Vertanen, Beagle, Erickson, Mott. That means Marcus Granlin not getting into the lineup. Let's talk about Sven Berchi. It's a little bit concerning, a little bit mysterious. Uh, let's not read in too much into it now, but the fact is he did not go with the team from Denver after the Colorado game to Philadelphia. He stayed actually in Denver. Then they're flying him home today. So Travis Green said it wasn't a concussion. Sven Berchi's had five concussions. Really sad. He's had five concussions already. But Green was quick to say it's not a concussion, but he also didn't say he was injured. So... Could it? But he said he wasn't. He woke up yesterday and it wasn't feeling right. So there's a myriad of things. It could be. It could be a family thing. And maybe he wasn't feeling right mentally or emotionally. And maybe he has to get home for a family thing. I hope not. Maybe it is. Uh, some people speculated he's on the trading block or the, the trade is about to be worked out. So they don't want him in the lineup. Um, but I don't know. Maybe when he says he's not feeling well, though, maybe he's sad he's going to get traded. I don't know. Or if he's not injured and it's not a head injury, and you think if it's a concussion. They wouldn't want him on a plane. At least you, we wouldn't think they want him flying so quickly after suffering another concussion. So if we can, you know, rule concussion out, but rule injury out, then you're looking at either he's really sick, but he had to be really sick to be sent home. Usually you can, you can get over a flu or at least stay with the team if you're sick. So um, I, I don't, I'm not one to speculate, but when you look at everything, when you look at, you know, the fact that it's not a concussion, that he can fly, but he's going home. He's not sticking around for the last, you know, three games of the road trip then it sounds a little serious. So it could be a family issue. It could be a, a really bad health issue uh, for him that we are not know of. Or it could be, uh, you know, he could be on the trading uh, trade block, so to speak. I don't know. Let's not speculate too much. Having said that, leave a comment below if you want. And, and you, can, you can speculate if you want and you can guess. I think we can speculate respectfully. But we will see what happens. I'm sure we'll hear more about that in the next couple uh, days. But what it does mean on the ice... It means that, and he was playing well. He since he's come back, he had five goals in twelve games. You know, I think he was tied with Elias Pettersson with five goals over those twelve games. But um, tonight, it'll be Tim Schaller looking to use his big body and use his work ethic. Um, and you know, that's a big line when you have Horvat, Schaller, and Levo. Those are all three, you know, decent sized guys. They're not the most skilled. They're not the fastest line. That's the Pettersson, Besser, uh, Godobin lines. But 
they're still they can put in some solid 15 16 maybe 18 minutes and and be a good second line for the Canucks tonight so we shall see we know that as I mentioned in the last video the bottom six Travis Green's very happy with how they're playing and how could you argue when you see a, a 2.9 from Vers, uh, Vertanen and Roussel each and you see a goal from Mott so let's see what happens well last thing I want to talk about really quickly put a pull up for the heck of it yesterday saying if Elias Pettersson had not missed those 11 games due to his two different injuries how many more points would the Canucks have in the standings and it was it wasn't the best question from a standpoint. When I put that out there, I forgot that when Pedersen missed the lineup, in those 11 games, the Canucks actually went 5-4-2. and two. So in those 11 games, they actually got 12 points. So uh, 12 points out of a possible 22. So that means the most they could have got was 10 points, right? Because uh, they went 5-4-2, and two, they got tw uh, 12 out of 22. That means there were 10 points that they didn't get when Pedersen's out of the lineup. So I shouldn't have offered over 10 as an option on my poll, but I did. So my question again was, if Pedersen wasn't, didn't miss those 11 games, how many more points would the Canucks have gotten in the standings? And I said, uh, option number one was one or two points more. Option two was three, three to five points more. Option number three was six to 10 points more. And option number four was more than 10 points, over 10 points. But I realized, and a few people pointed out to me, that was physically impossible. The, the most the Canucks could have got more um, in those games that Pedersen missed was only 10 points. So I shouldn't have even put that as, a, as an option. But still, um, and actually and a couple of other people read it as how many points, more points would Pedersen have got? Him, himself, as an individual, if he was in the lineup, didn't miss those 11 games. So of course, a lot of people picked over 10 for that as well. So whether you didn't do the math about the 5, 4, and 2, or you thought it was, I'm talking about Pedersen, not the team, that's where a lot of people picked um, over 10 but the final results through this it was uh let me just let me think about this it was 18 38 oh yeah this is what it was it was uh 14 percent said uh only one or two points more for the canucks the majority 38 percent said three to five uh, more points for the canucks and then 29 percent said six to ten more points and then 19 percent picked the completely impossible over uh, more than 10 points the Canucks would have. So the majority, like I said, 38% of you said the Canucks would have between three and five more points in the standings. I just asked that question because it'd be interesting. If they indeed had three to five more points, they would be in seventh place overall, not eighth. Still uh, not uh, strong enough to overtake uh, Vegas for the third third spot. But I did look at the standings right now, and the Canucks have two uh, games in hand on Vegas, and they're only eight points back. So if they win those two games in hand, then they're technically only four points behind the Vegas Golden Knights for third place in uh, in the Pacific Division. Now, I'm getting way ahead of myself, but that's what the founder of the GLCPC can do sometimes. But keep that in mind. If the Canucks win their two games in hand, then they're within striking distance of third place, and then you're not so, so much worried about a wild card. You're actually worried... Uh, you're not worried, but then you're looking at making a run for third place overall in the Pacific Division. And then you play likely um, San Jose in the first round. So maybe that's not so good. Maybe the Canucks should stay in a wild card position. Well, then you're still going to get either Calgary or or Winnipeg likely as, as the two division leaders. But we have a lot of time to worry about that. Got a lot of time to worry about the trade deadline. Today, I just want to talk about Sven Berchi, the fact that he's not playing, the fact that Tim Schaller is replacing him. We can speculate a little bit, even though I don't like doing that, but we'll hopefully find out more news of, about Sven Berchi in the next couple of days. So Canucks fans, leave a comment below. Um, tell me what you think. Do you, tell me think what you think of tonight's game. What's your score prediction? And also, if you were answering that poll, if you did answer that poll, if Pedersen was in the lineup, how many more, up to 10, um, how many more points would the Canucks have in the overall standings? Comment below. I'd love to read, react, and reply, as always. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Enjoy the day. I, enjoy the game. I won't be watching the game. I have a work meeting tonight, but I'll be rushing home to watch it on the PVR. It seemed to work on Saturday when I came home to watch an awesome 5-1 victory over the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, Colorado Avalanche. Hopefully it's the same, same thing tonight. Can't even talk. Hopefully it's the same thing tonight against the Philadelphia Flyers. God bless and go Canucks go.